Hey everybody, in the previous video, I was teaching you how to work with the database, but this was all within the interactive mode, and now I want to do it in our code so that we can actually get the data from the database and display it in HTML. So there's a lot of new concepts in this video, so pay attention, and really honestly, once you get through this video and the next video, maybe the next one, you've pretty much touched a bunch of different concepts in Django, such that any of the new Django series or videos we do, it's just going to be expanding on that. So if this seems totally overwhelming, that's, that's good. That means you're learning and you're getting a lot of different experience. So, and if it's totally easy and you're like, what the heck? Well then, you're just too pro for me. So here's what I want to happen. When you visit this page, I want it to list the books that we have. So we need to update the view, which is what is giving us this data here. So go back to our code and go into the views file and you can see books and stuff is right there. So we need to replace this. And I got an upgraded version that I'm gonna paste here. So you can type this out. So this render here is said to be a shortcut in Django because it does a lot of stuff for us. So we actually need to import that and we no longer need this HTTP response. And I know you guys don't really like when I paste code. I try not to do it too often. However, very syntactical. I don't want to screw it up 80 times. So now we're going to import this render here. So you can say from Django.shortcuts import render. Also, if we want to work with this book here, we need to import that. So we can say from, and instead of saying reading.models, since we're already in that folder here in this file, we just put a dot, which is the current directory, and then models import book. And my spelling is like a third grader, except worse. So, oh, there we go. <laughs> all right, here is kind of similar to what we were doing earlier where we did book.objects.all. Well, another option is this order by. So we're ordering by title, which is going to put them alphabetically, which is kind of cool, but we could just do dot all. And then this render function, it returns an HTTP response. So that's why it's like a shortcut. Instead of working with the HTTP response directly, we use this function here to do a little bit extra work for us. So the first argument here is the request, which is passed in when this is hit. So we just put that here. Then we have what is this, huh? Well, this is actually a template and we're gonna show you how to create that in a second. Then here is the data we want to be available on that template. So books is going to contain this list of books here, this query set. So if you're still following, great. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna talk about templates and a little bit more about the Django structure. So this is kind of dumb and confusing, but just hear me out for a second. So there's a, a popular design paradigm, MVC, model view controller, where the model represents the data, the view represents how it's presented, and then the controller is kind of the interface between the two. Well, Django has a similar structure, but the naming is totally different. So we have the model, which we talked about, this defines the structure, so that's the same. But the views are actually the equivalent to controllers and other web development frameworks. This is what is hit when you visit a web page. So the templates determine how things are presented, so what it looks like. So what we can do is we can actually build this, this index.html, and to do this, we're going to create a new folder. We're gonna call it templates. Then inside of this templates folder, we're gonna create a new folder called reading, then inside of the reading folder, we're gonna create a new file called index.html. Now, if you guys haven't heard of HTML, it stands for, no, I'm just kidding, I'm sure you guys have heard of HTML, but this is not just any HTML, this is special HTML, and that we can actually mix Python code with this HTML. It's called a templating language, or a templating language, however you would pronounce that. So when we are in this code, we're gonna have access to this books list. And I'm gonna show you how to display that. You just put two curly braces here and put books, like so. Anytime we put the curly braces, we're gonna represent some data. You may also see curly braces with a percent sign, which you can do different structures like loops and stuff. So we'll just start with this. 
Now let's go to the web page, do a refresh, and check it out. We get that data on this page. Yeah, it's ugly, it's a query set. However, that's a good start. Now what we can do is we can mix this with HTML to make it look pretty. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna create an unordered list, like so. And then inside of this unordered list, we're gonna do a for loop. So we'll do curly braces, and then a percent to open and a percent to close. So it'll look like this. And then we can say for book in books, then what we can do is do some more HTML. We'll do a paragraph, curly braces, book.title. And then afterwards, we actually have to do something you might not be used to, which is ending the for. So it'll look like so. There you go. All right, let's try this. Refresh. Hey, check it out. We have an actually not disgusting list here. So we're making serious progress. You got data from a database and displayed it in an HTML page. You could actually make these links to go to a more details page or, or to edit stuff or whatever you wanna do. I'm gonna show you guys how to make these links. I also realized I need a list item here. So probably wanna put that here. Probably do that instead of the paragraph, honestly. Refresh, all right, there we go. So that is a proper list, and now I wanna make these links. So we can just make an anchor tag, uh, href, this is going to link to, and you can design a link however you like. We're gonna go with forward slash reading, forward slash, and then instead of the book title, we could actually do the book ID and the quote is gonna go outside of the curly braces there. So that's gonna create a link for us. Then we need to close the anchor tag and we can put some text in here, which is where the title can go. So book.title. So hopefully that wasn't too crazy confusing. All right, let's try this. Refresh, and there you go. You can see the link down here. We got reading slash one and reading slash two. Clicking them, they don't go anywhere, but it's a good start. That is where an information page would go. This information page is going to be interesting because it should be pretty much the same for each one of the books. So, I mean, imagine if you had a thousand books, you don't wanna to have to create a new page for every single one. Instead, you want the same page, you just wanna change some of the data. So this one is going to act as a parameter which will change some of the information in the page. So the info page will be the same, but it'll just be generalized to get the information for that book. So we're gonna talk about dealing with parameters in the next video, as well as a little bit more on URLs. So stay tuned and be sure to subscribe if this has been helpful.